Welcome back to the DDLD and one of the final fragrance reviews I'll be doing on this channel. I'm out. I'm done. We got a couple more to go. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get down to business, shall we? Henry Rose. I had an entire 12 fragrance discovery set sent to me. So we're going to go through them all. And I'm going to tell you which ones I like the most. And hell, if I'm feeling energetic, maybe I'll even rank them in a pecking order. One to 12. But probably not. I, I'm probably too lazy for that. We will find out. Let's move forward. So Henry Rose was founded in 2019 by Michelle Pfeiffer. Yes, that Michelle Pfeiffer. Scarface's Michelle Pfeiffer. Dangerous Minds Michelle Pfeiffer. That Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay, so every fragrance from Henry Rose is EWG verified. And right now you're thinking, Joe, I wish you would make sense when you speak. Well, lucky you. I'm about to clarify things. So what does it mean to be environmental working group verified? Well, in the case of Henry Rose, it means the ingredients are cruelty free. There are no parabens. There are no phthalates, which I went and had to learn. It's chemicals that are used in plastics. No formaldehyde, no known carcinogens, no known endocrine disruptors, and it's dermatologist tested. So you're not gonna like break out in a rash. Cause I mean, who cares if you smell good if you look like a creep, right? Right. All right, but enough of this preamble. Let's get started. Let's begin with Henry Rose's fog. Okay, we have top notes of Mugay and fresh citrus. Oh, uh, okay, I get it. Mugay. All right, can we just get back to the notes? We have mid notes of white woods and magnolia. And we have base notes of vetiver, sandalwood, amber woods, and musk. Like I'm gonna keep these as short as possible because we have a lot to do here. So for me, fog is a winner. I didn't think I would like this too much, but I actually like it a lot more than I thought. It opens in a kind of almost black licorice way. At least that's how it lands for me. And then it settles down the sandalwood and the, and the vetiver and the florals start to come through and it becomes a very airy kind of scent. I could see this being like a, a just a go-to for a lot of people. All of these fragrances are what they're calling gender neutral, which I think we used to call unisex. Look, I don't know the new rules, but I think we can figure it out. It's not that hard, right? Um, as far as seasons, I would say summer, spring, fall, not really a winter scent for me, but I do see people saying they wear it in the winter. It's just an easy go-to, and it's got a great scent profile. So there's that. Let's move on to the next one. Dark is night. We have top notes of green grass, mid notes of vetiver and freesia, and base notes of patchouli and vanilla bean. Okay, so as you might imagine, this is a little more masculine leaning, in my opinion. Uh, women can wear it too. Again, these are all what they're calling gender neutral, but this leans a little more masculine for me. It's very warm. Um, it almost feels gourmandish, although there's really nothing there except the vanilla bean that you could call gourmand. But it has a gourmand kind of vibe. The combination of everything almost gives it like a sweet caramel nature, but the freesia the florals kind of stop it from going in a full gourmand direction. They come through. Um, this, I don't see this really working well in high heat summer days. It's meant for the night. It's in the name. Dark is night. Wear it at the night. Stop being, stop being difficult. Welcome to Jake's house. I guess this is where the party's at. I don't know. We have top notes of fresh marine, mids of neroli, peony, and jasmine, and base notes of ambroxan and musk. 
All right, we might as well just bury the lead here. If you know me, you know I don't really like these kinds of scent profiles. Marines, that, that all this kind of stuff is not really for me. That doesn't mean it's bad. It just means I'm not fit to judge this. Kind of like bro country. I hate bro country. You could bring me the best bro country song of all time and it ain't gonna do a goddamn thing for me. So I'm not fit to say. I will tell you this though. For these type of fragrances, this smells pretty good. Uh, strong Neroli, strong Neroli, but it also does have that marine aquatic kind of vibe to it that conjures up images of sitting poolside on a hot summer day. I wouldn't say this is for the winter at all, possibly not even the fall. This just feels like high heat to me. Um, but I also, on the other side, think all those seasonal things is shit we conjured up here in FragCom to make top 10 lists, and I never made them, so I'm just telling you, wear whatever the hell you want, whenever the hell you want. Now, it should be mentioned that this is a bestseller for Henry Rose. So, if you're into these kinds of fragrances, I'm going to assume this is a pretty damn good one. But for me, it's just kind of there. This isn't about you. All right, so we can all see those are sheep. What if there's a wolf in sheep's clothing? Look at that crafty some bitch. You know, it's about to be an all you can eat buffet for him, but that's not why we're here. Let's go look at this fragrance. We have top notes of pink peppercorn and rose, mid notes of Egyptian orange flower, Turkish rose absolute, and Boris, and base notes of Amber Woods, Ambrette Absolute, and Musk. Okay, here's the thing about sheep's clothing. I think it smells great. It almost has a vintage kind of quality to it, uh, like a gentleman's fragrance. It's got the pink peppercorn up top, and then the Oris kicks in. Then it all settles into that suede vibe you sometimes get from Oris with a little bit of spice from the peppercorn. And that's what kind of makes it feel a little bit vintage. But there's a problem. Sheep's clothing just doesn't last very long. And I mean, within an hour, it's a skin scent. And that's a shame because I really like this one, but I can't really recommend it if it's going to be gone in no time. You're going to go through this bottle respraying and respraying. So. Unfortunately, this one for me is not recommendable for that reason alone. All right, so you're seeing the visuals, you're seeing the name, and if you know me, you already know. Char from Henry Rose has top notes of South American tonka bean, Ivory Coast ginger, and labdanum resinoid. Mid notes of Indonesian patchouli and Moroccan orange flower. And base notes of Haitian vetiver. All right, look, this one, if you know me, you know this is right up my alley. This is the kind of stuff I like. Now, it's not as smoky as you might think based on the name and the visuals I've done here. There's a little bit of that. But what comes through is a strong patchouli, but a very similar patchouli to what Aaron Terrence Hughes used in Patchouli Noir. It's got that sweet, almost chocolatey vibe to it with a little bit of the smoke in there. For me, this fragrance is just great. And so far, out of all the ones we've done here, this is easily my favorite. And the final entry for part one of this video, the new release from Henry Rose, Menace. Except, well, there's nothing menacing about it. It's a fruity marine musk. We have top notes of lime heart, tangerine heart, Lantisque Absolute Maroque. Mid notes, crisp marine notes, Mediterranean Cypress. And base notes, Cedarwood Heart Virginia, Patchouli Oil, and Sensual Musk. Now look, this is another one that just not for me. The citrus is really strong here. 
And while it's balanced out with the patchouli and the cedar, those are definitely detectable. The citruses are just still the star of the show here. The Lentisque Absolute Maroque, from what I've read, is supposed to supply a bit of a chocolatey kind of note, even though it's a green element. I'm not getting any of that at all. So this is just, for me, a citrus powerhouse. If you're into that, you're probably going to love this, and it does seem to last quite a while. Now, for me, as somebody who doesn't particularly enjoy these kinds of fragrances, if I had to choose between this and Jake's House, I would pick Jake's House. I just think it's overall a better fragrance. All right, that'll do it for part one of the Henry Rose Discovery set. I will finish up part two as soon as possible and get that out. Then Allison and I are going to finally do the second half of the Mask Milano collection that we never got around to. Then there will be Zaharoff's Aurum. And after that, that's a wrap for me in FragCom. So, I will see you on the second half of this and the other two after that. <laughs>